it, it kind of bothers me that so many people in the Linux community, they want to try to throw shade on the GNU project for whatever reason. I see a lot of people that really try to discredit the contributions that Richard Stallman and the folks at the GNU project have made to the GNU slash Linux operating system over the years, and really to software in general, just computing in general. I mean, the contributions of the GNU project really changed human history, and I think that should be something that everyone, it should be obvious to everyone and everyone should respect, but there are some people, for whatever reason, I see a lot of people really trying to separate GNU from Linux rather than, you know, I, I don't care if you call the operating system simply Linux. I understand it's convenient. You don't have to call it GNU slash Linux, but I see people that actually get angry when you bring up GNU. Like if, if I call it GNU slash Linux, I get people in my comment section, DT, stop calling it GNU slash Linux. You don't have to run GNU and Linux together. Well, I know that. <laughs> Right? I know that there are Linux operating systems out there that don't use any GNU utilities and, you know, things like that. I understand that. I also understand that I can have a GNU operating system that doesn't use the Linux kernel, right? So, I, obviously, the two can actually exist without the other. But what does that matter, right? I, I never hear people complain when I say GNU slash Linux. No one in the comments ever tells me, hey, quit calling it GNU slash Linux because you can run GNU without Linux. Nobody ever says that. They always tell me that I can run Linux without GNU. And it's always, and I, I find it hilarious because I think some people really just don't understand how tied to the GNU utils that, Linux is as far as our GNU slash Linux operating system, our standard Linux desktop operating systems most of us use, right? For one thing, you really can't have anything without GCC, the C compiler, right? That's probably the biggest contribution that GNU ever made was the fact that they made the compiler that compiles all of our software, right? And you, you really can't get away from that. Yeah, you can try, but no, you're you're not really getting away from the compiler. Glibc, I know, you know, MUSL is out there, but MUSL is not really a replacement for Glibc. Uh, it's for one thing, it's very slow. It's much more of a minimal thing. Where Glibc is much more complete, much more performant. I know that there are distributions out there, Linux distributions that strip out GNU and strip out Glibc and replace it with MUSL, but it's it's not a, an actual equal replacement. It's actually an inferior product, and that's okay. I, I'm not trying to throw shade on MUSL, but people try to build up these alternatives to GNU to make them seem like they're more than GNU. People want to rip out the core utils and replace them with all of these alternative you know, core util systems, and none of them are as powerful as the GNU core utils because the GNU core utils have been around for decades. People work on them. They have a ton of flags and options and functionality built into them that these, you know, new core utils that come up every now and then, they're missing a lot of standard options and flags. It's one of the reasons why, really, if you run a GNU slash Linux operating system, you should never rip out the GNU core utils and swap it out for something else because a lot of scripts on your system, uh, especially those of you that are into scripting yourself, you're going to run into situations where you're trying to use flags for basic core utils. And if you're not using the standard GNU core utils, you're, you're going to have some issues. Some of your scripts are not going to run. You're going to break things. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the GNU project, but really, mainly I'm a fan of free and open source software. I've told you guys this. It's not so much that I'm a fanboy of you know, Linux or GNU slash Linux or anything like that. I'm a fan of free and open source software. And the fact is, history's already been written. The contributions that the GNU project have made to software and to computing in general, that's already been written down in the history books. No matter what you think of Stallman or the GNU project or the Free Software Foundation or the GPL, whatever it is you have a problem with, you know, you can't rewrite history, right? But their history is set in stone, and just because you don't like them, 
you know, you, you can't just rip them out of the pages of the history book. The same thing with the Linux kernel, you know, the contributions Linus Torvalds made by writing the kernel. I know some people have a problem with Linux. Typically, we don't see those people within the Linux community, but certainly there are people that run other operating systems, you know, Windows, Mac, certainly some of the BSD guys, they have a problem with Linux. A lot of them don't like the licensing because the Linux kernel uses the GPL which is the GNU public license, a GNU project, another contribution that GNU made, right? And a, a lot of people have a problem with the Linux kernel for things like that. But again, you can't take away the contribution that Torvalds made and the Linux kernel made. Even if the GNU project died, every you know, all of that software just went away tomorrow. Even if the Linux kernel went away tomorrow, you can't take away the contributions that men like Richard Stallman and Linus Torvalds made for mankind. You, you can't do it, and I don't know why you want to. Uh, whatever it is, wh whatever bug you've got up your butt, <laughs> want you to try to tear down these people. Some of you guys just need to chill out because you're you're really not you're not going to accomplish anything just by being negative and trying to tear these guys down. At the end of the day, you're not you're never going to achieve anything. And I think it's silly, you know, when these people keep spouting this this stuff that they think they think are insults, like, oh, you know, stop calling it GNU slash Linux because you can have Linux without GNU. Well, yes, that, that's always been the case. Since the beginning of time, we could have Linux, the Linux kernel without GNU. And the same thing with GNU. We could have GNU without Linux. Well, not since the very beginning, but at least for the last two decades, we were able to have GNU without Linux because the herd kernel has been working for about the last 20 years. The herd kernel isn't great, but you can have a fully good new operating system without Linux. And yes, you can have a Linux operating system that has absolutely no GNU parts to it as well. But those are very niche operating systems that 99.9999 times out of, you know, whatever, whatever percent you want to put on it, it's very, very close to 100% of the time when people talk about running Linux, Linux on the desktop, Linux on the server. They're actually talking about a GNU slash Linux operating system. You don't need to tell us that Alpine exists or Android exists or whatever, or that GNU geeks with the herd kernel exists. I, I, we don't need to know that. We all know that, but that doesn't take away from the fact, uh, the, you know, the history behind it, that really we wouldn't have an operating system had the GNU project not started working on an operating system back in the 80s and that in the early 90s, Linus Torvalds created a kernel that eventually the GNU project and the Linux team would come together and actually make work together. Uh, that's the history of it, and, and you can't strip that history away no matter how hard you try. Ran over, guys. Peace.